school and speaking to students. I do many, many different things. So when I get home, I like to chill out. I do a couple of days in the salon, and it's great. My first model. Um, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I still work in the salon. Um, yeah, and then you know, I get to travel the whole entire world, and I meet all kinds of really cool people. And um, I met Renato back in December. He was a, my assistant, for, or one of my assistants at one of the shows. And um, so it's really cool, you know, I met this guy and now we work together, yeah, right? No, we work and, uh, and now we live together, no. Um, <laughs> but um, I am, I am uh, 75, about 75% colorblind, that's another thing a lot of people don't know about me. I also have my own art studio in San Francisco where um, it's probably about the size of this room that we're in right now, and this is uh, my man cave. This is where I go, I turn my music on. I don't really invite a lot of people there. But you guys are all invited. Um, <laughs> I don't invite a lot of people there. This is where I go. It's kind of like a, like a Michael's blew up in there. There's anything and everything from hair to glitter to wire to anything. And I go into my room, and I get, I get to go into my room when I, whenever I want. Sometimes I'm working on jewelry. Sometimes I'm working on clothes. I like to make clothes. Sometimes I'm, and I've never had any classes. I've never really had any education in anything other than hair. So it's my way to kind of go in and, and be creative, right? And I say this every time I go out and I'm on stage, I'm an artist. Before anything else, I'm an artist. I make clothes and jewelry and this and that. I'm just an artist that just so happens to do hair. There's nothing different between me and you guys out there um, other than like mileage on my flights and stuff like that, you know? Um, I'm just, uh, I, I, I literally say, I literally say I'm still a, I'm still a cosmetology student. Um, Sebastian has the tagline of fearless. Everything, oh, fearless, be fearless, be fearless, you know? And uh, I think the most fearless people I've ever met in my entire life were in cosmetology school because we don't really know exactly where we're going. We're still learning, we're still so fresh. And that's why the What's Next Award is so um, near and dear to my heart because I'd have to come in here and, um, you know, my job, I, I, my job is to inspire people. That's it. Right? It's like a work of art. You go out there and uh, I do a really cool updo. I'm looking at here, we're walking through here, these little styles in here. This one for instance, right? Someone might walk up to that and be like, oh, oh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, why is she behind me? <laughs> this is just an example. No, take her back. Take it back for one second. Can I see that one down there? Yours? <laughs> yeah. Can I have that stand? Yeah. We talked about it. The only reason I, I take this one back and bring this one is because we talked about this earlier. And then we'll open up for questions. Because I could talk for it. <laughs> Somebody could look at this right here and be like, yeah, that's cool. It's not elaborate. Mine's better. Mine's avant-garde. Mine has uh, flowers in it. Yours doesn't. Um, when you create art, Somebody, and this is anything, with a, a painting, with a sculpture, with anything. Um, when you have an artist do something, oh damn it, these chairs are everywhere. <laughs> I, need, I need more, I need room. <laughs> All this for like the smallest little point. Um, is that uh, when you, when you, whenever you create art, right, and that's what we are, we are artists. I don't care, oh, hairdresser, hairstylist. Air Ninja, whatever. We're artists. When it comes down to it, it's art. What we do is an art, right? We have art class every single day. This is cosmetologist's art class. And people will appreciate your work, and some people don't get it. No problem. I'm the king of that. I'm, a, I'm an avant-garde specialist for Sebastian, so I do like all the really edgy stuff. I've done stuff for movies and celebrities and music videos. And, and like I was telling Tina, I have my art studio in, um, in San Francisco where I go in there and I create these really cool... Head pieces. My work is very dark. It's very Tim Burton, Lady Gaga, and um, and uh, but some of the stuff, you know, some of the stuff that's getting attacked. Uh, some of the stuff that I do has never been seen before because this is I'm not doing it for anything. Well, sometimes Sebastian will call me and say, "Hey, make a, a gothic piece that uh, is inspired by the, you know, um, 1800s." I'm just making this all up. But then I have a job. Then I'm like, okay, well, I'm, I'm researching. I'm doing. But there are other times when I'm like, I got three days off, right? No travels, no work in the salon. I'm going to go work on, on a hairstyle. And so I'll go and I'll do a little updo like this, you know? And, and it's, it's my art. It's very personal. 
So, um, what the hell was my point? Yeah. Was the line, right? uh, I, I forgot what I was going to say. I just wanted to bring her up here. The littlest details. So, um, yeah, I had something deeper than that, but we'll go with this one. Uh, <laughs> anyways, I was just going to say that some people, uh, I love this one. This one is really, really amazing to me. As soon as I walked in, I saw it. And I saw little points out that, that I thought were really, really important, really, really cool. Without even speaking to you, I was kind of looking at like, man, I really like the simplicity of this. Um, you guys will see on Sunday, not the graduation ceremony, right? Yeah. Um, I put together a little collection with the help of Renato, and we're going to have some assistants and uh, come in. And I think we have eight models and some around there. And you'll see my work. It's a lot like this. It's, 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 it's something very simple. Right? I mean, a lot of work went into this because it's clean, you can tell. It's simple, but sometimes the most simple things are A, the most challenging, and B, um, the most striking. I'm like all over the place right now with my conversation, but you guys get the realm of it. <laughs> all right, thank you so much. You guys get the hand for her. Because <laughs> Say something really powerful. I swear to you guys. I felt uh, like it was like the line. Like, well, I was talking. I was not really going to talk about. It was more about creating art. I think just being an artist and having your own style. Ah, that's really powerful. Yeah, that's where I was going. But I can't really remember. Some people are going to like your stuff. I don't know. Yeah, I got it. Okay. You don't even need to say. The thing that we saw when we went to Boston, like you know his work, which is really cool. So artists end up having their signature, and you'll recognize their work without even them having to say anything. And so when he had, I saw them working on the West behind the scenes um, for a blonde and a dark haired model. So it already intrigued me because they were pre-sewing the West and then like braiding them. And I didn't realize that was just to keep the hair intact because they didn't come out with like braids. Mm -hmm. It was just loosely braided, but I'm like observing. And then all of a sudden you, that he knows how to, coordinate that music drops the models appear they had this mask on mm -hmm. it was like a cage just mask and then the wefts just pillowed out and hit the shoulders just at the right length and they walked together and you felt it and so I think that's what they say a lot of times too if someone can get you to feel a certain way from their art like that's amazing so you don't you don't need the words it's okay you know <laughs> that's what I meant to say yeah. that's totally what I meant to say <laughs> No, because that's what I was saying. That's where I was going. Was like, our job is, my job is to inspire you. That's where I was headed. It was like, my job is to inspire you. Not everyone is gonna like my work. Some of the stuff that I do, people look at it like, well, the cage mask. It's, oh my gosh, like Hannibal Lecter made. I don't know. It was beautiful, but it was all made out of hair and wire, and and uh, it was just the accent piece. It didn't take away from the hair. It added. But there were people who were like, I don't get it. Like, what? A, a hair mask? I don't. That must be uncomfortable, you know, like, <laughs> there's some people that don't get it, right? So that's where I was going with the headpieces. Some of my people say, like, oh, that's cool, whatever, but I've been mine is better, whatever. I'm here to inspire you guys, and, and, um, and that's it, you know? And like I said, people like my work, people don't like my work. But um, us as hairdressers have to um, <laughs> stay true to ourselves, going back to you. Yeah. All right, so, and then Renato's here. And uh, <laughs> I tell you, I talk a lot, you guys. So every time you answer, ask him a question, I'm probably going to answer it for him. Like what he meant to say. <laughs> I thought he brought up a really good point about, you know, comparing and contrasting. Um, if you guys are going to compete, that's cool, but just be better than yourself. Don't compare yourself to another artist. I don't want to be Omar, Omar doesn't want to be me. So you do you and enjoy it. And if someone doesn't like it, that's cool too. But as long as you are happy creating your art, that's what's most important. You don't want to so. be here? No. You don't want to be here? For a day? Renato said something really interesting on the way here, and I said, you know, at such an early stage, they're able to collaborate. You know, a lot of people, especially... Can you say a little louder? Diaphragm, <laughs> um, <laughs> diaphragm. Yeah. I know. Okay. Like the so, what <laughs> what they were saying, um, Renato was saying in the car, they're able to collaborate really early on, which is very hard for artists, right? We know that you pair someone up on a project, they see things so differently, but they respect how each other sees it. And you were saying something really interesting: how he sees a relation of space and opposites, mm -hmm. and you see more color. Do you want to just explain that? So. I am 
First of all, my name is Otto, for those of you who haven't met yet. Um, I'm a Wella portfolio artist, so I teach for Sebastian Wella and Nioxin, and I'm also a master color expert with Wella. So from the start of my career, um, I've always focused on color most. Um, that's always been my passion, but I also enjoy cutting and styling as well. So when I look at someone, a client, or a model, I'm looking at their color and how I'm going to build the shape first with chemicals. So, Omar letting you know that he's colorblind, we kind of see things a little bit differently. Um, he sees shapes that I don't necessarily always see at first glance. And he breaks things down in a way that I still don't understand and I appreciate that. So it's, it's a really good way that we can collaborate because I can look at you and he sees one thing, I see something else. So we kind of meet in the middle a lot. So I'll tell you one, one challenge I've had ever since I was in cosmetology school, is that uh, I, I've always wanted to be good. I wanted to be really good, like really good. And being that I was colorblind, when I first started cosmetology school, um, I was always extremely self-conscious because I can't see color. Like, how am I going to do color? And I, I didn't tell anyone I was colorblind, of course. I'm like, no, look at my dad. <laughs> and uh, I'm like, oh my god. So I said, well, no, no, I'm going to focus more towards cutting and styling. And so, um, yeah, I wanted to be good. So um, after I got out of cosmetology school, because uh, in cosmetology school, really, you're, you're learning, you're, everything's so new, and you have to pass this test, and everything has to be right, and then you finally pass the test, and the door's open, like, oh, shit, where do I go from here, you know? <laughs> and so for me, I had to take advanced classes. That's the only way you're going to learn. I got into a salon, and I, every single spare little dime I had I went in and took further education, mostly on cutting and styling. And it was probably damn near three years after I graduated that I finally was like, I'm kind of good a little bit, you know, <laughs> compared to the people that I'm sitting next to, like, oh, I'm, I'm doing all right, you know. But, um, yeah, but, oh, so the hardest thing for me, though, is that I wanted to be good, and I wanted to be very good. And um, if, if we were doing updates, I wanted my updates to be better than the person next to me. And, and uh, just so I could say, I did it, you know, I did it, and lots of practice and, and, and whatnot. But the hardest thing for me to do is to, was to collaborate with people. And when I talk to people, you know, when I speak in front of audiences, that's the number one thing that comes out of my mouth is you have to collaborate. Because I wish I would have learned that earlier. You know, like I would be working on, a, on an updo, and then someone would say, hey, or, you know, now, when I started working with Sebastian, that's really when I got into collaboration, where they say, oh, my, we're doing this big show, you know, this here's some pictures for inspiration, create something. All right, cool. It's like, you know, I'm being on the design team is amazing. So I'm working on this great, you know, look, and I'm curling and crimping, and what the hell I'm doing? And then the director comes over and looks at it and goes, I like it. It's not quite there yet, but I like the direction of going, all right, Nato, this is Nato, hey, oh, my, you guys are going to work together. Nato, what can you add to this? I'm like, oh, hell no. <laughs> And then I was like, maybe the size should be tighter. I'm like, maybe they shouldn't. You know, like, I don't want tight size. You know what I mean? Like, but what I started to learn is that, you know, they would pull the sides tighter. And I'm like, oh, that does look kind of nice. You know? <laughs> or or uh, placement. So that's where we were going with that, with the look back there with the twisties and the bun. Yeah. Placement, placement, balance, and um, and then allowing yourself to to collaborate. That was the hardest thing for me to do. And now that I have my art studio, Renato's going to be moving soon. This is still a secret, don't tell anyone, but he's moving to San Francisco. <laughs> and I can't wait to get him in my art studio because we're going to collaborate together. And this is with makeup artists, we're collaborating with photographers, and but just allowing yourself to collaborate now. Um, and I think the What's Next Awards is a huge way to do that because you know, it's nice for you to focus on one thing. Now, for those of you who are doing the What's Next Awards, you're like, I did the clothes, I did the makeup, I colored her hair, I did, I, I did, I did, I did, oh, congratulations. But when you get a little tiny team together, and it's a team effort, that's, that's really cool. You learn so much from that, you know, so. So, it's not often, you know, we get an artist that's international, and they're here for question and answer, whatever questions you wanna ask. 
So I'd like to open it up to you. No questions, silly. So I don't want anyone to get nervous. Um, so what what are you curious about? Yeah. How did you start with Sebastian? So it's a super long story, but I'll condense it. So, um, <laughs> cue music, get the dancers ready. Um, so, I was, uh, I start, okay, so I had kids. My first kid, I was 15 years old, and then we had four kids. And so, when little Omar, my youngest, was born, little O, yes, I know. Um, you guys should see him, he's so cute. He's like, well, he's 17, he's still little Omar, he's my youngest. But he's got like the little dark circles and the dark hair. He looks like a little Tim Burton character. I love it. Yeah, he's like either gonna be extremely artistic or he's gonna like shoot people in, in the street. <laughs> <laughs> he's lunch alone and that type of boy. Like, anyway. Um, yeah, yeah. You get where I'm going with this. So, um, but he's very dark. Anyways, so little Omar was just born and I was 26 years old when he was born. And uh, I was working, I had, you know, when you have, who has kids? Yes, lots of kids. So, when you have kids at a very young age, and we all have our thing, you know, we all have our things, we are all going through something. When you have kids that young, rarely do you get a chance to say, what, what, you know, what do you want to be when you grow up? But, you know, you have to get a job, right? You don't get a chance to really say, like, I want to do this, I'm going to go to college. You got to take care of those damn kids, right? Mm -hmm. So that's what I did. So it wasn't until I was, uh, I did a little odds and ends job, whatever, to get money. But I ended up finally getting a job that was at um, Cosmoprof. This Cosmoprof. Yeah. 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 So back in, in California, it used to be called West Coast Beauty Supply. And I got a job at their corporate office, and I sat in a little cubicle, and I took, you know, I was a, such a punk rocker, my whole kid, all crazy colors and weird clothes and whatnot. And I would take orders on the phone. I'm like, oh, how many shampoos do you want? And how many colors are this? And it, that was my job for four years. And, I, and, and I'm such a, a creative person. I loved it, because it was the hair industry. It was really interesting to me, but I got fired, because after four years of sitting in a cubicle, I was just like going crazy. I, you know, just sitting on the phone, and people are mad. And, Anyway, so when uh, when I got fired, I called home to my wife and I was like, oh my gosh, I got fired. And she's like, good, I'm glad you got fired. She hated that damn job. <laughs> she said, um, listen, she says to me, I got an amazing job. I'm making great money. She's like, what do you want to do? Go back to school. What do you want to do? And I was like, I don't know. 26 years old, I don't know what I want to do. And I said, something artistic would be really nice. So I want to make clothes. So we went down to the San, uh, San Francisco Academy of Arts and looked into the um, Fashion Design Fashion Institute. And they wanted me to go for four years. It was super expensive, four years, full time. I couldn't do it. I have kids. I can't do a full time job, a uh, full time uh, schooling. It, it, it was too much. I couldn't do it. I was really bummed out. I'm like, well, what else can I do that's artistic, you know? And so I thought, well, what about hair? So April's like, hair? What the hell are you talking about? Hair? You're colorblind. You can't do no damn hair, you know? And I was like, I don't know, but maybe I can stick with cutting, maybe? I don't know. And so I went, and I, um, there were many, many schools, and I found one that was, I, at that time I lived about an hour and a half away from San Francisco, and I, that's the school I chose. It was amazing. The, the staff was amazing. I loved beauty school so much. It was like, like I said, every day was art class. There were those days. You know, like, I can't do it anymore, you know? But, but, um, but I loved school. And so um, I did. I went there for 18, like 18 months. And um, I just loved everything. And um, right out of cosmetology school, I worked in a salon uh, for three years. And uh, like I said, that's the three years that it took me to get confident. And after the three-year mark, I, me and a couple of friends... One girl had all the money. She goes, I want to open my own salon. I'm like, yeah, so all the young kids were like, yeah, let's open our own salon. And so we went there, and I was only there for one year. I'm the type of person that uh, I like to have fun and be around positive people. And as soon as someone's negative to me, I'm like, please, I'll be over here. <laughs> um, if, if I'm in an environment where I don't feel like I'm getting any inspiration, please, I'll be over here. So that's what I did. I was there for a year, and they were not. I was all about, come on, let's move, let's go, let's learn, let's go to shows. And they're like, ah, kids soccer and see, you know, so anyway, um, the Sebastian company came to my school, oh, it came to my salon, and they wanted us to take on their products. Now, at that time, 
we're not going to get into history, but in 2006, no, 2008, they relaunched Sebastian. There was a whole big relaunch in 2008. So this is before then. Before the relaunch, oh, you could walk into the grocery store and the whole line of Sebastian was there. So they're trying to put it in my salon. I'm like, no, no, thank you. We don't want any stuff. You could buy that at the, at the grocery store. Okay, thank you. <laughs> and they're like, no, it's a really good product. I'm sure it is. But no, ours is more elite. You know, we carry this bread and this bread. Thank you. Thank you. But no. They said, well, let us take you out to dinner, please. And we're like, oh, free dinner. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Come on in. Talk to me about Shaper. So me and the entire salon, me and the entire salon went to dinner, having no intention at all of carrying Sebastian. Why? Why are we going to carry Sebastian? But if we're going to buy a dinner, let's go. So we did. And they're talking, and I'm like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I'm just eating my little ravioli, whatever. So... Uh, my, one of my coworkers was really embarrassed by the way that I was acting. He said, "Hey, sorry, you guys. I, uh, he's just he's really tired. He just got off a plane. I was, at that time had just got back from the Redken Exchange, Fifth Avenue, and took some amazing cutting classes. So like, oh, you're a cutter? I said, yeah, I don't do color. I do. I just I'm just a cutter. You know. And they're like, have you ever um, considered being a haircut instructor? No, mind you, this is my fourth year of doing school, and really was all about education, education. I thought, oh, what if I was an educator? You know, oh my God, could I do that? I'd be so nervous. And so a couple months later, I auditioned. Boom. They loved me so much. They said, we want to pack up you and your entire family, move you from San Francisco to Los Angeles. You're going to be a star. We're going to get you on stages and da, da, da. So I was like, ooh. And so I packed up the whole family and we moved to Los Angeles. That was in 2006. Bam. As soon as we, sh- as soon as we came in and said, welcome, this is our new home, Sebastian closed oh, for ooh. two years. No. They fired everybody, and Sebastian was a ghost town. And I'm like, I'm here! You know? <laughs> oh, no. What's that? Oh, no, you would never know And they shut it down. And they got rid of, they pulled all of the Sebastian out of the stores. They, they got rid of everything. Back then, it was Sebastian and the orange, in the orange collection, the green collection. It was too much. They erased everything, and they spent two years researching, you know, um, editorial hairdressers, uh, run uh, uh, hairdressers for um, Fashion Week, and they did all this this work, you know, if, and, they, and that was one of them. They pulled me in, they said, Omar, if you had one little tote bag, and you had to have the, you know, you do runway shows, and if you're in the sun, what are the products that you would like? And we, you know, so that's how the, really the relaunch happened. 2008, I got a phone call, so LA didn't work for me. I was trying so hard to be a star, and there was no one to support me, and I, uh, my money was leaving, and the kids were like, yeah, I'm hungry. So I said, all right, we're moving back. So we moved back to San Francisco. Damn near the same damn thing happened. I finally got back home. That's also about the time that me and my wife split. I went, I got my own apartment, and I, I'm like, I no money, about to go through a divorce. We're like, oh, right? And then and they, they called me. Literally, as soon as I got home, threw my duffel bag down, I got a phone call from L.A. Hey, Omar, we're relaunching Sebastian. It's going to be flow, form, and flying, blah, blah, blah. We want you to be, you know, the number one form. We are international, da 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 and I'm like, I just got home, like, oh, yeah, I just got <laughs> but I had never been on stage before, right, I got the job back in 2006, but you guys shut the damn door, so um, from 2008 until 2000 today, I've done one thing <coughs> and one thing consistently, is I always bring something to the table, my boss from Sebastian told me that. The second you don't, and this is just for all of us, the second you don't bring something to the table, there are 40 people, 400 people standing behind you like, get the F out my way, because I want that job. So the, my thing is that I now, like you were saying, I have my own style. If you see my work, oh, that's Omar. If you see 10 miles away, I bet you Omar did that one right there. I'm very intricate with my work. I'm very clean with my work. I practice, I practice, I practice. I'm always consistently looking at shape. Who is there in New York for the relaunch, or for the launch of the collection? Right? Do you guys remember when I was there and I had, I think it was your doll head. I had someone's doll head. Oh, and it, and me, we put it, Lisa Marie. Lisa Marie. And we put it to the wall. Oh, yeah, that was yeah, and we put it to the wall. <laughs> yeah. 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 This right here, okay, no matter how, now this is, you know, she just did this and blah, blah, blah. But no matter what this looks like, for me, this is how my eyes see yeah, as a colorblind great. artist. I don't care what this looks like. When you have a bright light here, and you can't see it right now, but if you put this up and you see the shadow, what the hell is that, right? I mean, no, I can't see it, not this one. But um, <laughs> my eyes, I have been trained so well now with Sebastian, and, and, and not even just with Sebastian, collaborating with other artists, at how to look at, at shape different, 
how to look at balance, and um, you're so sometimes, whether a haircut, hairstyle, color, you're so like, okay, I'm gonna create this texture, I wanna do this, I wanna do this, okay, that's looking nice, that's not, okay, calm that out, blah, 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 blah. But then you step back, you're like, ooh, what the hell did I just make, right? It doesn't, it's, it's, the, whole, it's the whole realm. And, if, and so I think that to go back to where I got my education, to being colorblind, to not having the money, but still making classes, all these little steps that you guys are going through and, and will continue to go through, you know, um, that's how I got here. And the reason, the, way, the reason I got here the way that I did is not my ability, not my, it's, it's about the people that you surround yourself with. That is the absolute number one. The, 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 the young generation and the one they already have no more dreams because oh. 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 he can't get rid of me that's why he's <laughs> he's, he's can I finish you, can I finish my speech yeah. Yeah. when you when you are in love <laughs> and you cannot sleep at night thinking in the person you love is because you don't have no more dream that became reality. Is that true? Because you cannot sleep because your dream is when you are awake. Because you can't wait to have that person next to you. So I don't have no more dreams because you are my reality. <laughs> well, don't stop me when I'm talking oh, because yeah. you're going to get it later. You're in trouble now. <laughs> um, I, it's amazing because most people, we were saying this um, about Omar, and everyone that meets him says the same thing that he's the most humble platform artist, international artist. You know, most people, when they get to that stature, they constantly feel like they have to be on top of a stage because it's kind of like a protection, you know? But this, to me, shows how secure someone is because they just let you in. He didn't have to share all that about his personal story, but I'm sure because he did, it makes you realize the company closed down like two times. Right. You know, they moved him back and forth. All these promises. He has kids. Then on top of it, he's going through a divorce. Most people would have answered that call and been like, sorry, just bad timing. Right? Like, I got, I got, I want to give my kids a better meal. But he said, he said, no, I'm going to do it. And like, look where he is now. And he stayed humble, you know? So I think sometimes, and you probably didn't want to have to go through it, but sometimes we go through things for a reason. You know? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Everything it's like, you're like, why reason. do I have to go down that long road? Right? Yeah. 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 And then, and that's when you go to go apply for a job at a salon when you guys graduate. And they say, oh, I'm sorry, we picked somebody else. And you're like, oh, I want to burn it down now. <laughs> <laughs> but everything happens for a reason. Right. You know what I mean? Yes. When, you, when you say, my graduation date is December 12th, boom, boom. And all of a sudden you find out it's January 8th. What the? <laughs> but everything happens for a reason. Yeah. Yeah. You are exactly where you are today for a reason. You're supposed to be right here, right now. Mm -hmm. Uh, I love that. I don't think we can get any like better than this. Like it's Offer. been amazing. So um, <laughs> instead of doing more questions and answers, I'll give you time to put your chairs back, and then I need to get just like a group picture with everyone. And then um, you know what a great way to go into graduation.